So we're going to do something new today, but first we got to compare the old stuff. So look at everything. Um, I did split them up. Everything on the left side is u substitution, and you can tell that because you have its function, and then that function's derivative. And so then we know we can use u substitution. But if you look at everything on the right side, you don't have something and its derivative. What you have is two different functions. We're going to have to do something new. So what we're going to do is called integration by parts. And you might not really care about this part right here, but <clears throat> u substitution is the inverse function of the chain rule. Well, integration by parts is the inverse function of the product rule of the derivative. So let's do this. This is what we do for integration by parts. So we have the integral of u dv. That's the problem. And to solve that, we do uv minus the integral of v du. So over at the bottom left is how I like to set it up. Now notice how we use a lot of u's and a lot of v's. And so here's a pro tip. Um, it matters on if it looks like a u or if it looks like a v. And so I do try to be more careful with these, but I know how my handwriting gets, so I just always put a, a tail on the u, no matter what. And then I can, when I go back later, I can tell if it's got a tail, it's a u, and if it doesn't have a tail, then it's a v. So you look at this and see you cannot use u substitution. We have two different functions, and so we're going to have to use integration by parts. The original problem has u and dv. Now I like to tell people u is always a polynomial, but that's just not true. It's a good um, guide to go by, though. So this time u is 5x, and that makes the dv everything else, which is cosine x dx. So we're going to find du and v, which means we're going to do the derivative of u, and then we're going to do the antiderivative of dv. So the derivative of u is 5 dx, and then the antiderivative of cosine x dx is sine x. So for integration by parts, we have uv minus the integral of v du. So you did all that setup, and now you can plug all the stuff in. And so then for the part where it says minus the integral of v du, you go back and do the antiderivative for that section. We are subtracting, so you need to be careful with signs, because later we'll subtract negative things, and it can be kind of tricky. Also, you don't have to write every part down every single time as long as you can keep track of what part stays in the final answer. Neither one of them, and neither one of them is a derivative of the other. So we set up the u, v, du, and dv blocks again, and the original problem is u and dv. Now, this will come up again later, but whatever dv is, we have to be able to do the antiderivative of it, and the and we have to be able to do the derivative of u and get something like a constant. Because later when we do the integral of v du, we need to be able to do just the antiderivative. So we plug everything in, and then we have minus integral of v du, so we do that antiderivative, and then we make sure we have uv, and then our simplified next part as the whole answer. This one's going to be more work, so remember when we do integration by parts, some good advice is to make the polynomial u. That makes u 10x squared in dv sine x dx, and then we fill the rest in, and then we plug in uv minus the integral of v du. Don't let the negatives trick you. It is u times v, but to write 10x squared times negative cosine x, the proper way to do that is to put negative 10x squared cosine x. I do that a lot. I do it with coefficients, and I do it with polynomials, and I do it with negatives all the time. So be ready for that. Be careful with the negatives. Here we have minus a negative, so that's easily changed to a plus sign. Now notice, when we have the minus integral of v du, we can't actually do that antiderivative. We 
we're going to have to just go back and do integration by parts again. I don't like using different variables just to keep track of this problem. You're just going to have to keep it organized. I did change colors. We follow the same guidelines. We make the polynomial u and we make the rest of it dv. Then with that chunk, we do integration by parts again. So we do uv minus the integral of v du. I don't like to rewrite the part of the problem that I've already done, so I just move on to the next step and then simplify that part. So it does kind of look like the little stair steps, but you're going to have to keep it organized so you remember which part stays in the final answer. Remember when you do these, you have to be able to do the antiderivative of dv. So I wrote down here that dv is ln of x to prove a point, but then you can't do v, so you have to make ln of x u, and the rest of it is dv. Then you plug everything in and finish this integration by parts. Simplify when you can. Here we're going to do the integral of ln of x. And we can do it because of using integration by parts. Now remember, ln of x has to be u because we don't know its antiderivative. Here finding v might be a tricky thing, so we're going to take a little side note and remember these nice little antiderivative rules. So then you can do uv minus the integral of v du and plug everything in.